hit the microphone. Welcome to my new apartment here in Chicago. I just recently moved. With that, I had the opportunity to get a little bit of a bigger space because before, if you watch my videos, I always filmed and transformed my kitchen basically into a studio and that was not sustainable. So now I have a bigger place where I have what is considered a den. It's not necessarily a bedroom, but down the hallway here, we're going through the gallery right now. So I have like a couple of photos put up here from my various trips and that leads us to the den, which is a small room. It is seven by eight feet large, basically at the end of the day. My vision was really to build it out as like a minimalist space that has an industrial vibe, but also has a touch of nature. I'm renting this space and I cannot really build it out as much as I wanted to. So all these things are semi-permanent. And if you are in the same situation, I think this video is for you. Check it out. Okay, so what purpose does this room need to fulfill for me? On one side, it is a shooting space. I want it to be versatile, have different kinds of backdrops so I can shoot talking head, but also shoot product shots. And on the other side, it is a workspace where I edit my videos just to have like a place to go back, feel inspired and also work in a, you know, like just like on a consistent basis rather than what I usually do and edit on the couch. And for me, a desk has to fulfill three purposes. On one side, it needs to be convenient to work from. And certainly the 60 by 30 FlexiSpot E7 desk here, big shout out to FlexiSpot for sending this over, allows me to have a large workspace. Then it has also to be beautiful in front of the camera because I want to use it also as a presenting desk where I can just have talking head discussions. And last but not least, it also should be used as a product shot table. It is on casters so that I can just like move it around in this little space here as easy as that. And it's a standing desk. My back will thank me. I just hit one button and it goes up. If I feel lazy, and let's be real, that happens a lot, uh, I can use this C8 chair here. It's an ergonomics chair, also from FlexiSpot. Like it, it's, it's very comfortable, it has this extra headrest. It is on wheels as well, again, to be flexible and just push it out of the way. As you can see, I'm using a 2021 M1 Max MacBook with that BenQ video and photo editing monitor that I had for a while. I have like a cable solution down there below as well, which is important as I'm moving things around here. There's only one cable going out. Everything is powered from a central station down here. So that allows me to again be flexible. And then to give it all a little bit more personality, I have like a little few accessories like Everyone needs an Edison light bulb. Actually, I have some in my living room, as you may have seen already. So it kind of continues the overall design philosophy that, I'm, that I have in this place. And then this fake little bonsai tree, great. Just so you know, links to all these products that I'm talking about today, I'll leave it in the description below. So you can check it out whenever you see something you want. Okay, so let's talk about the walls, the backdrops, because honestly, this is what I'm most excited about in this studio and have obsessed for months. This studio comes with these ugly eggshell white walls, so I had to do something about it and I wanted to give it a premium, more sophisticated look. And I landed on this combination between these black wood slats and these concrete walls here because I feel it gives like a nice tunnel effect and gives this room more depth and dimension as well. So. Let's talk about these wood slats here. Those are from the Wood We Near Hub. Thanks so much for shooting them over. I am absolutely in love when I first saw them online on Instagram, I believe is when I first saw them. And they come in different colors and are pretty easy to install. Again, to that point, like this is not my space. As so I had to find solutions that are you know, semi-permanent. You just measure this place first, like how much, do, how many wood slats you need. They come in basically a one foot by eight foot uh, dimension and then I have now eight feet here in this wall on each of these walls 
and it's really easy to install. You can either, either glue them, which I didn't do. Again, it's not my space. I drilled them into the drywall pretty easy with about nine screws per panel. You don't even see the screws because they're black here and hidden. And then if you see it down here, if you have power outlets, you can just carve it out as well or cut them really easily if you need to shorten them. Again, it's, it's pretty straightforward to install for someone who's not very talented and it comes to any woodworking or installation jobs. What's very cool about them is that they're actually sound deadening. So as you can imagine, we talk about sound a little later, uh, this room is aqueous crazy and these have this felt in between and therefore are sound deadening. Now you can improve the sound deadening effect even more so if you create a little distance between the taking wall and your wood slats uh, by putting like some some additional bars of wood behind it uh, to create that basically deadening space on top of it. Now I have already limited space and decided to go right into the wall but that's that's definitely possible if you want to increase the sound deadening effect even more so. Here on the back end we have these concrete panels. Now I really wanted to go for this industrial look and it was pretty hard to find a solution to make actually this kind of concrete wall look happen. Initially I had the sticky wallpaper you can just stick to the wall. It just doesn't look real, especially if you shoot it from different angles. Even on camera it doesn't look real. Uh, and if it doesn't look real on camera, you can imagine how fake it looks in real life. So I ended up on these concrete, faux concrete walls that I got from Wall Theory. Again, leave the link in the description below. Uh, but they're about urban concrete. They come in different thickness levels. These are the, the thinner ones, but they absolutely do the job. If you, have, if you don't see the top part or where they end, you wouldn't know that they are actually fake and they are super easy to install as well. So in my case I actually drilled them into the wall behind these like mounting points here and within these little hook points I just like drill in a screw. A couple of them I think I have like eight per panel and it's super fast to do as well. If you have like I had here in this case I had to cut them. I just used a drywall saw and cut them down measured it before obviously and, and positioned them in, in the right spot but uh, it allowed me to really like blend this concrete wall look into this whole design as well. And if I still feel like it I could still use my seamless paper here that I've used a lot in the past if I want to give it a splash of color or if I have a client project that needed a certain kind of color scheme. For that I just pull up two very poles here and set it up here on one of those, those walls. Now, very poor. Now you may be wondering how are we actually mounting all these lights and all the sound panels and whatnot. On one side, I didn't, I, it needs to be semi-permanent so I can't really drill in much into the walls, especially not heavy, heavier stuff. And B, I, want, I don't have that much space so we wanted to get everything off the floor as possible. So these very poles, shout out to my buddy Brandon who actually showed them to me first and I have bought a bunch of them now. These, those I'm using to both mount my lighting as well as my audio equipment and, and other things that we'll get to in a second. But lighting, so as you can see we have basically a four point lighting setup here. I have two main lights here, that's the Nanlite Compact. They are bicolor LED panels that give a very nice smooth light. They're not as bright as my Forza 500 with a softbox that I've been using in the past but they are also way smaller in its profile so uh, for me that was important as I can just like put them out here so you can have both like a key light and a fill light. Shout out to Nanlite, I've been using Nanlite for quite a while and they helped me out to fill in some gaps here as well. For hair light, for backlight or also for some texture we're using actually the, the Forza 60Cs. I drilled them in here with a Matthews mount into the wall. They're pretty light so totally works with the drywall uh, and in, in both corners. On one I have a projector attachment here that can take in gobos so you can put uh, patterns on one of the walls here as well to give it 
a little bit more visual interest if I shoot down here. These are also RGB colors, uh, colored lights. So I can make any color of the rainbow this place if I really want to get a touch of color. Again, I'm, uh, that's possibly not the look that I'm going for, but I could totally turn this into a, like a club here and we can all party. And you can see I did the whole cabling here. I actually like rounded it up here with some extension cords and looped them around in these two very poles. Now, these very poles are generally speaking not designed to be a horizontal tension rod, but they can take some weight when it, and they're also sitting on my wood slats here, so it's actually fine. I can also throw a, let me show you a, uh, I can also put a parvo tube up here to give it a little bit more of a touch from up up here but parvo tubes also play a role to give the background a little bit of a touch we're using here one on the ground just to give it a little bit more depth and dimension on these uh, very poles i also have attached my rode ntg3 boom mic and it is uh, using just a super clamp super easy to install a little bit of a friction arm here as well as uh, one of these like bendy things. I don't know what they're called. Do they have a name? Bendy things? Bendy thing. I can basically move it anywhere in the studio here, no matter where I stand and talk to the camera. I can move this, uh, this microphone and I just pipe it here into the Tascam Porter Capture X8. If I want to have a podcast conversation, I have that Samsung microphone right here that also can pop, pipe into the Porter Capture and have an alternative audio source. Or I use my beloved Tentacle Sync lav mics and audio recorders if I do a lot of movement. Also, while it is pretty optimized for sound deadening with the walls, clearly because this is this high ceiling that I'm working with here, it's like 12 foot high, I needed to do something about the audio bouncing up from the ceiling. So I built these sound panels here myself by ordering some of these foam pieces as well as double-sided sticky tape and used some of the cardboard that, uh, that came with the uh, table here to build these sound panels here just to kill some of the reverberation that is coming from the ceiling. Now, you may actually hear it right now, but there's still some echo coming from the, from the hallway. So for that, we're gonna go down. Uh, for that, I actually installed again with a tiny tension rod that you can get off Amazon, another curtain just to kill the sound here when I'm recording. It's super easy to install. Bye! The nice thing is actually there's no window here, so I don't have to worry about light spill, but certainly like that helps already to kill some echo coming back from, from the hallway as well. I know this is video is about the studio, so we're not gonna spend too much time on cameras, but just wanna give you an idea of what I'm shooting at. Possibly my new A cam will be the Ronin 4D because of its autofocus and it's tracking feature, so if I move around in the room, it just follows me. Well, that's Paul following me, but just kidding. We're shooting actually on a Komodo right now, which is still also my alternative A camera, especially when I'm gonna shoot product shots or something on a slider. Also talking head, the Komodo is still very much core of my production. And then I also have the A7S III, which I possibly will use a lot for top-down shots. I have this little contraption up here, which allows me to get real quickly set up for top-down shots. And with the A7S III that I can use for an alternative angle or just like a top-down shot is my solution here. Now you may have been wondering, where is all my gear stored? And let's see if we can show you. Here is where all the cameras are in. It's so much nicer to have a little bit of a structured way to have my cameras geared up. Here's like all the audio equipment. Here's a lot of lens accessories, filters. You see all the lenses. The main cameras are down here. Hard drives, USB cables, loads of cables. Gear that is not released yet. These are like very interesting. Everything is in uh, here. So it's super easy to access it for me, bring it right to the studio. And then over here we have the backpack and lighting storage. This is like lights always come with these massive bags. So you find all the lighting, some additional sliders in here as well as all my backpacks. And last but not least, 
the battery card and charging bay. Now, this is a big question that loads of people always talk about and ask about, like, what, how, do you, how do you charge your batteries? I just came up with this little card here, which I had for a few years, but I've never used it for batteries. Basically, the idea is that I put all my empty batteries down here. Then I have this whole middle section here, which I use to well, basically Velcro all my charges to. Uh, that allow me to charge multiple ad batteries at one time. But the reason for Velcro is, is because I travel a lot, so I need my chargers on the go. So I just rip them off, take them with me, and then once the batteries are charged, they go up here. You get the idea, and it's pretty mobile, so I'm just like move it around and, and put it in different spaces wherever I need power. So, that's pretty cool, right? All right, yeah, such studio build out is not cheap, but it is certainly an investment in this channel and in my business. And if you are feeling inspired by any of these products, I'll leave the links in the description below. I really appreciate your support. Only with your support, this was possible. But if you have any ideas on how to make this space even more useful or beautiful with accessories or so, let me know down in the comments below. As always, I really appreciate you watching it. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe. As always, have a good morning, have a good night, whenever and wherever you are around this beautiful planet. Bye-bye.